hello and welcome to another video usually in large projects or perhaps any project at all you have an interplay between different teams and different sections and then you'd have the electrical design you'd have the, me the mechanical the civil design and sometimes you get imputes from each of these um, department gets input from the other now for example let's say you're done maybe with your um electromagnetic simulation and then you give it to the mechanical guys because most of the time we usually simulate just the vacuum and then the mechanical guys are supposed to build a structure around it and then they build this and then you might want to check if the bevels and the screws and all the other features that um they include um into the structure makes any difference to your model or perhaps you just have this input directly from the mechanical um, team and then they want to run some analysis on it um so for whatsoever reason there are lots of reasons that you could um have to run some simulation on some complex models like this now if you should look at this model then you see a lot of intricacies you would see some screws some screw holes and everything so this is really really complex now you could go ahead and run the simulation on this and i did that just so that um, i have some um results to show and then um so i also do not waste time in the video so um the analysis that was run is um, the wakefield simulation so the material here is spec and then you already defined you know, already defined the beam and everything and then i run the simulation so what i'll be checking today would be the loss factor so i'll be checking the loss factor so this is 3.642 and then you could see also at the bottom right corner where my mouse is you know yes you could see the okay i didn't mean to click that you could see the number of our mesh cells now while this is good and fine you could potentially simplify this model a lot which would save you time now this is just a small model but then consider this for a very big model you could potentially simplify all of this model because the only part we need for our simulation at least for our electrical electromagnetic simulation is just the vacuum that are interesting to us and not all of these holes but then what happens is that if you should simulate it like this then you typically define i mean you have to define your not boundaries you'd have to define your background as normal which is vacuum and then what happens is that i think i can show the bounding box yes so this is the bounding box which is your simulation domain now what happens is that wherever there's no material it fills it with a vacuum so you have that each of these holes um is included in the simulation domain but we do not need that at all so what we or what you should do is to try as much as possible to simplify your model to have just what is necessary um you remove most of the detail but then not i mean of detail that you lose some features that you might have in the simulation so this is what we are going to be doing in this video so this is our model i've copied it to another file so i can start trying to simplify it now in cst this is really easy and it also depends on how your model was built now this case um, although the structure looks really complicated is going to be really really simple but then in some cases you have to do some other tweaking of the geometry to be able to generate the vacuum seamlessly so in cst how you do this you go to modeling and then you go to shape tools and then under shape tools you see fill up surrounding space and when you click on this what you have is the fill up calculation domain so it's um the so the name is the solid solid one you could change it to any other thing then i want to fill it up with vacuum and then which component do i want to select in my um filling so i have the list of components which you also have here but then i want to select the entire component so that's r m d i one yeah, 5130 so this is it and then once i click ok it generates the vacuum just like that and this is really cool so i could create a new component let's create a new component and call it vacuum and then i move my solid into the vacuum so i moved it just by dragging and dropping now i can look at just the vacuum itself now you see what i was talking about that all of these are 
included but then you see that in the end these do not play any part to the interaction with the beam between the beam and the area the region that we're interested in so all of these are kind of not no not kind of all of these are definitely not needed in this simulation and um, we have to take them out now when you fill up the space it creates one big solid and then how do you go about removing all of these other parts you could do some extreme boolean calculation maybe put a box and then delete this but then we do not need to do that thankfully because cst has another feature which is seen shape 2 and then it is separate shape so these separate shapes that are not continuous so it checks um for a particular it checks the whole geometry and then separates the shape that are not continuous for example what do i mean by continuous you have that these bolts are basically i mean these um, um bolt holes it not a bolt one of them but then they are basically standing um alone so this would be a separate shape and then any shape that is not connected um to any other shape is separated as a separate shape so very easy you click on separate shape and what you have is this array of solids so you see all of the separate shapes that we have and the only one we're interested in is this this part of the geometry so i'm going to go ahead and delete the other one so which one do i need oh i didn't take note of it no was it 44 no oh boy i think i'll just start to yes 46 so i need just 46 select everything except 46 so i do not need all of these parts all of these is junk so i go ahead and delete mm. delete yes and then i'm left with this now um this is still in the i mean the, the surrounding part the surrounding metal is still in the um simulation domain so what i can do is i could go to local mesh properties so that is right click right click go to local mesh properties and consider for simulation i untick it so if i uncheck it then it is not considered for simulation also consider for bounding box i also uncheck it it is not considered for bounding box i could uncheck everything however okay i'll demonstrate this i click on this consider for refinement and i have excluded it from the simulation this is okay but if i should go ahead and generate the mesh um update you see that i have just a slight reduction in the amount of mesh um and this is because for some reason it's still i don't know but then it looks like it does not consider this region for like the outside region for um for the simulation but then i found out that i i still do not know the reason but then i found out that deleting this um, model itself actually reduces the number of mesh and let's see that so i do not know the reason why that is because it shouldn't be that way let me check again um local mesh properties because i was i mean basically it's excluded from the meshing but then it still generates this so deleting it and having just this as a geometry and then when i go ahead and update the mesh again you have that i have just one million cells so this is what i have and yes so you see that by simplifying the model we've been able to reduce it from 4.15 million to 1 million that's a factor of 4 for some other models you could have maybe way significant reduction or for some other models you could have maybe least um, um a not so very significant reduction but then we've simplified our model and then this is what we have to work with now we have to run the simulation and then compare the results how much does simplify the model change the loss factor we're only looking at loss factor um for this case we could also look at different things you could run your simulation and then you, i would recommend you perform all the checks from the full model and then the simplified model and then see where it's different with parameters and different uh, and try to and try to um maybe know which extra components would improve or get the solution close to the full 
model solution and just like that iteratively you'd get maybe a more simplified model that you use for subsequent analysis so now let's see um one thing you have to take note of is um just take note of this I, i'm mentioning this because i had a problem with it <laughs> before you run your simulation make sure to change the background to peck so the surrounding space is now peck perfect electric conductor so make sure you change that so it's exactly the same simulation settings and um, i haven't changed anything except simplify the model and also change the background because the background we used for this was normal so that the space field would be vacuum so i'll go ahead and save this and run with exactly the same settings and this shouldn't take a lot of time so uh, maybe should I pause now? This doesn't take a lot of time, but yeah, is there anything I would like to also to point out? Yeah, not really. I think I'll just go ahead and pause, and then or not, I won't pause. So I already run the simulation, and then this is this is the result. <laughs> yeah, this is better. So I'm um, looking at the loss factor for this case. We had um 3.46. 2855 and then for the simplified model if i should look at the loss factor i have 3.464633 so not um very different this is 4628 and then this is 4636 so not a very um different loss factor for the simplification we have and then you could also go ahead and inspect your um your wake field um impedance let's look at the z now one thing I could or I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Remember from the other video, which I'm going to link how to um, copy results between simulations. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to go to the 1D folder and paste it. I could also paste it. Oh, there's an option to paste with prefix here. So I paste it and then I'll just rename this to Z full and then I copy this and then I paste it here and then Z simplified. Now you could see the difference in the um, Z impedance. I think I could also do the same for X and Y. Let's see X and Y. Let's see x and y then i'll copy this i hope i can tell the difference between them i don't want to spend time on up or just it shouldn't be lazy so i call this full and then call this full and then i paste this so for the x this is what we have very similar almost the same and then for the y also we have good um, correspondence between the um full model and also the um simplified model so that's it okay this is done and like i said it won't take a lot of time so um let's see particle beams so it's basically the same four six four five yeah and um yes so um that's it and then this you could perform this on basically um any complicated model you receive maybe as an stl file or a step file um i haven't done a video on importing but then maybe one of these days so you could import different card models and then once you import it usually you can't work with the you can't make any modifications to the I think most of the time you can't make any modifications to the actual um, geometry cell, but then when you create a CST native volume from it, then you can play around and work with it. And yeah, that was it for this um, video. I hope it helps. And until next time.